The average family doctor in Canada makes $270,000 a year. The average nurse makes $64,000 a year. But there's another group that's helping with personal tasks like feeding and bathing, household chores like meal preparation, and even some medical tasks, and they're doing it all for free. In fact, they do so much that if we were to replace them with paid professionals, it would end up costing us $25 billion. So who are they? They're the husband taking care of his wife with dementia, the mom caring for her child with cerebral palsy, the son taking care of his aging parents. Eight million Canadians are informal caregivers who provide unpaid assistance to family and friends. And these same eight million Canadians are at an increased risk of negative health outcomes, including depression. Depression is a major concern because it is a predictor of poor caregiver health. Poor caregiver health can result in an inability to provide care, and this can increase the risk of hospitalization or relocation into a nursing home for the person that's being cared for. But the good news is that research has consistently shown that higher amounts of social support, as well as participating in social activities more often, are associated with lower amounts of depressive symptoms for caregivers. But we currently don't have a lot of information on the impact of social support and social participation on caregiver depression in Canada. So for my research, I analyzed data from over 6,000 Canadians, and I wanted to know how their perceptions of social support, as well as how often they were participating in community-related activities, influenced the amount of depressive symptoms that they were reporting. What we saw was that higher amounts of affectionate support, having more positive social interactions with others, and participating in community-related activities more often were associated with lower amounts of depressive symptoms. And when we honed in specifically on caregivers in the sample, we found that caregivers with higher amounts of affectionate support, as well as those who were participating in community activities more often, had lower depression scores than caregivers with lower amounts of affectionate support and less frequent participation. So why should we care? Well, we need to make sure that caregivers are able to continue doing the activities that they like while caregiving to protect their mental health. This requires ensuring that caregivers across Canada have adequate aspect access to respite, which are services which can give them that break from caregiving. And when healthcare professionals are talking to caregivers, they should be asking them questions about social support and if they can still do the things that they enjoy so that we can track how caregivers cope with providing care. This would enable us to intervene when necessary and find ways to enhance caregiver support, which would help to maintain caregivers' ability to provide care. Because we have to remember that if caregivers can't care, then it's our healthcare system that's going to have to start paying up.